Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to the first post-Christmas Knife AQ. It's number 17, the series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. Today is a big one. It's the last Knife AQ before the end of the year and I'm going to do something uh, that some people have been asking for for quite a while, so let's check it out. So the purpose of this video um, is kind of twofold. For one, this is kind of going out as a thank you to everyone out there who helped us reach 100,000 subscribers on this channel before the end of the year. We more than doubled our subscriber count in this crazy 2020. So just a big thank you to you folks. And as such, I'm kind of, I'm going to do something that I wasn't sure I had a good place to do on this channel. And it's also going to answer a question that a lot of folks have asked over the last several months is show us my personal collection and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a little bit of it here for you guys today. Uh, just as a, as a thank you, hopefully this is just some nice post Christmas viewing for everyone. Um, the problem is ain't nobody got time to watch a video of my entire collection. So I just, I brought a few things in today uh, to film that kind of, they tell the story when you put them together of how I kind of got into the knife industry. And I, th I think it's a, a kind of fun tale. At least I like looking back on it. So we're going to start with the LT Wright GNS. This was uh, before my time at the Knife Center. I used to write for a blog, The Truth About Knives, which unfortunately is no longer online. But this knife right here is the first knife that was ever given to me by a maker or manufacturer for review purposes. And so in, in a way, it really marked a turning point from just me as an enthusiast writing about stuff to you know being a little more involved in the knife world. And what a cool introduction both to LT Wright, uh, a relationship that has grown into a really nice friendship with the man over the years, uh, but a great introduction to him and a great introduction to his knives as well. This is one of the older versions, the, uh, the SRI. They used to publish a magazine called Self-Reliance Illustrated, and this was the signature logo version of that knife. For a bit over four inches of blade, 01 steel, Scandi grind, and it's just a bomb proof knife. And this is where I fell in love with LT Wright's stuff. Uh, I did mod it a little bit after the fact. Uh, I had gotten it with uh, a bead blasted handle, but I had him polish it and add thumb scallops to it for me, just because I really like that. Uh, and I really like them especially on this knife. Just a great bushcraft design. Nice, comfortable handle. You guys know they shape these by hand so that there's no hot spots. You've got military or uh, marine grade epoxy as well as the loveless bolts there and a lifetime warranty. Nothing to worry about with these rock solid blades. Uh, but that was just the start. Um, I wound up taking some knife making classes from LT Wright uh, and eventually starting Nordsmith Knives, my side project uh, with LT Wright helping me out uh, to manufacture the knives. Um, but I'll start with the knife classes. Uh, he offers a few levels of classes, and this right here is the first knife I ever made from scratch. I'd, I'd done some modifying of old hickory knives before this, uh, but this is the class knife. This is what you make uh, when you, you attend LT Wright's shop over the course of a weekend. A strip of 01 steel, two blocks of black micarta. This is actually a double black in this case, which is why it is so deep. A couple of pins, and do that over the course of the weekend. And Still proud of this knife. Obviously, I can do a lot better now, but perfectly usable. Uh, this actually accompanied, accompanied me on a ton of different camping trips. Uh, not quite a three inch blade overall, full flat grind, really effective, crisp spine so you can throw fire steel or throw sparks off of fire steel. And I even had a, a custom sheath made uh, by my buddy Col Colton Chapman from Red Nose Leather. Uh, really nice horizontal carry. You can do it uh, either side of the body, but I used to carry a cross draw small fixed blade when I camped quite often in fact. And I still love this knife even though uh, I don't really carry it on camping trips to this day anymore. But for a first knife that ain't bad. Um, this is the first knife I built without any uh, adult supervision as I like to say. Um, this is after I had taken that first class and I took what I what I learned home and tried to uh, tried to duplicate, and this one is definitely a little bit rougher. But I was, you know, I'm, again, I'm a lot better now. Now the Bushcrafter shape was actually designed by uh, Tim Stetzer, a guy who I can also say is a friend now, having met him on several uh, camping trips with the LT Wright crew. 
Uh, but I picked this because it was, it's a fairly straightforward and simpler, simpler shape, but it's a very usable shape, so I figured I might be able to handle it. Um, turned out pretty good. Natural micarta. Uh, I think this was 1095. I'm actually, uh, might be drawing a little bit of a blank there. Uh, convex grind, and I did that on a, uh, on a 2x42 grinder, I want to say. And the handle here, Natural Micarta, actually did all of the handle with a, a Ken Onion work sharp with the blade grinding attachment. This was before I had uh, my own uh, professional knife grinder, so I was kind of seeing if I could do it. And I think it turned out pretty well. Certainly feels good in the hand. I've never really used this so much. Um, I know it's heat treated well enough, but I kind of wanted to, to keep that one kind of special as the uh, the first first one. Um, yeah, definitely more improved now. Um, but LT Wright's classes are great. Obviously, this year hasn't been a good one for uh, them doing in-person classes at their shop, but hopefully they'll be able to open those up again soon uh, once the world gets back under control. Uh, but this knife right here is the advanced level class that they offer. This is the knife that I made in that class. And so far, uh, there's, there haven't been too many of us that have graduated that class. But this is sort of the gentleman's hunter that we built there. And just look at the, the disparity between these two. You can definitely see a lot of advancement, and I've, I have continued to get better even still from this. Uh, 1095 in this case, heat treated on site. Some nice file work there on the spine that I'm really proud of. Dovetailed brass bolsters, which are really nice. And of course, some nice dyed wood here as well. Just a super classy knife. Again, not one I really wanted to use so much, just because I was really proud of it. Um, also, I, uh, I, I'm not really that much of a hunter, so I'm not going to take this hunting either. Um, maybe I should. I should take this out camping one day and just, just use it because it's really nice and very special to me. Nice mosaic pins. Uh, you can't buy this though. You have to take the classes. Um, so as many of you folks know, uh, I did mention Nordsmith Knives earlier. That is uh, my side project that I, uh, where I... I, I use LT essentially uh, as my OEM, if you want to call it that. Um, but he he graciously agreed. Uh, one day at the end of the day, I just I kind of had to answer that question: Where do you see yourself in five years? And I just drew a blank. All I knew is I wanted to be more heavily involved in the knife industry, and that's when I decided uh, that evening that maybe I should start something for my own designs. And uh, I told my my girlfriend at the time; she's my wife now. And the second person. Uh, to, to hear anything about it was LT. Uh, he was in town for a gun show that weekend. I, uh, I was good friends enough with him uh, at that point. I went up and said, hey, I had this like harebrained idea. And he goes, well, heck, let's make you a prototype. I was like, okay, right on. This is great. And I couldn't ask for a, a nicer guy to be involved with. Um, which brings me to the initial prototype. Well, actually, no, a, a first in between. Um, my, my initial design, the canteen knife, which is in stock right now at the Knife Center, at least while we're filming this, heavily inspired by Nesmucks. You folk, regulars on this channel know I love a Nesmuck knife, and I have a ton of them. So I, I want to show at least one of them. This is a Blind Horse Muck. Uh, Blind Horse, of course, is the, uh, the company that came before LT Wright. When the company split up, LT and the other uh, partner in that operation went their separate ways. But how cool is this? We've got elk handles here, burlap, uh, turquoise burlap bolsters, 01 steel blade, and just the lines of this are what I love. And the lines of the Nest Muck are what led me to, to the canteen knife. I was looking for a camp knife that could do kitchen knife stuff, and it's all about this drop here. I knew there was something there I could exploit in my design. And that brings me to the first canteen knife prototype that, uh, that LT made for me. This was before I even had the name Nordsmith, which is why it actually has LT's logo there on the side. But I, I came to him with my drawing and my ideas, and he built it out for me. And we tested this one for a bit over a year, I want to say. And then it got refined into the current incarnation. This one right here at the bottom is the, the first of the production ones. Uh, handmade, of course. I say production, not like uh, these aren't being churned out by a factory. But this one here at the bottom was the first one to come off the, uh, the machines once we did the initial run. It's got the first stamp right there. So that one's really special. But you can see the, uh, the evolution of the shape right there as well. Now the first ones here, uh, obviously the handle was a little bit shorter. Not just the fact that we, you know, we added the thumb scalloped area there at the front. 
uh, but also the, the length was shorter. We had to open that up a little bit. The blade here was CPM 154 on the original prototype, which the latest run of the canteen knife is actually the first uh, saleable canteen knives that are back to CPM 154, so that's kind of special. Uh, but the convex grind here, it's certainly effective, but it was, wasn't doing what I wanted for the food prep type of things, which is why we then went to the, uh, the high flat grind instead. But this, say what you will, this is a tank of a knife. Uh, it's been through the ringer. I've taken this all around. Uh, I, I modded the handle a little bit after I had gotten it in, which is why you see some kind of weird stuff going on here as I was experimenting with some slightly different shapes. But it does all the camp knife stuff I want. It does the kitchen knife stuff. You can choke back with this pommel uh, right here at the back, get a little bit more chopping action. Special piece for me right there. Both, both of these are. And I'm, I'm really happy to have had a, you know, a fair bit of success um, for this, for such a, a small endeavor as it's turned out to be. This even made it onto the cover of Knives Illustrated, which I'll forever be honored uh, by that. Um, I'm getting emotional thinking about it. Really cool knives. Um, I'll only show one other Nordsmith here, but you, uh, you'll you never be able to buy this one. This is a knife that I made. Uh, we made five of these only, one for me and one each for the groomsmen in my wedding. Uh, we, I put the initials of uh, their initials on their blades. But this actually is, uh, with a bunch of tweaks, this is what led me to eventually designing my skipjack pocket fix blade. But another pocket carryable knife for my fellas. AEBL steel. Uh, this one actually is a convex grind as well. And I did that so that we could have a nice flat panel there on the front for the engraving. But it's 3 seconds of an inch thin, so it's nice and slicey. And then kind of green and yellow became the signature colors for Nordsmith, so I kept it going here. Nice green jigged bone, fat yellow liners that look really great. And it's just a nice little carry piece. It kind of combined some elements of uh, a few things I was really into at the time. Still great knives, um, but it's the handle is a nice neutral shape. I carried a mini griptilian a lot in those days. And the handle has a, or the blade has a little bit of a dragonfly shape into it maybe. Um, but put together, I think it works really well. So in my time writing for that blog, I got to meet a lot of different people, uh, not just LT Wright, uh, but a bunch of other, um, I'm, I'm pleased to say friends these days as well. And so I wanna talk about a few of them. Uh, one of the things uh, in the, uh, the testing period for that original canteen knife, I was able to take it um, and visit Mr. Ethan Becker of Becker Knife and Tool uh, in his Tennessee property. Uh, I've, I've been to the place a number of times now, I'm glad to say, but initially um, he helped me out a little bit in, uh, in testing this, giving me a little bit of feedback, um, some perspective on knife design in general. I've learned a lot from that man. And I was able to like kind of take this to his property, hack things around there. Um, at the time I had a BK9, that was my only Becker, but on that trip he gave me this BK16, which is, is still a special knife to me. Uh, I did, of course, review it for the blog uh, at the time. It's just a fantastic knife. You guys know and love it. Uh, obviously, it's not in stock format anymore. I've done a few things. I, uh, I stripped the coating off the, the blade portion here, kept it intact under the handles for corrosion resistance. Uh, but I stripped that so it's going to slice a little more efficiently without the uh, coating in the way. But I patinaed that steel back to almost black uh, after the fact. I love, the, I love the look, and it slices even better than before. And the handles here were, uh, were given to me by another uh, friend of mine now, Mr. Dan Eastland of Dogwood Custom Knives, and these are his Firefly handles for the Becker knives. And if you're not familiar with Firefly, it definitely has a, a, a unique or a distinct look, but the stones embedded in these resins are glow in the dark, and there's a few different colors of resin, but the glow factor on these is absolutely astonishing. Uh, they, he says about 30 minutes of direct sunlight and these will glow for up to 10 hours, which is pretty impressive. Now in terms of the accuracy of that, I have tested that out before. Uh, I charged one of these up and, uh, and then put it in an, in an ammo can and I was still able to see discernible glow off of it after eight hours and that was just, after, just with uh, a lamp in my room, not direct sunlight. And what's even more impressive to me is there was one day I had it uh, just sitting in a room that had blackout shades in the room and I hadn't gone into the room all day. No one had been in there, the shades had been drawn, so there was no light in that room all day. I walk into it after the sun had gone down and before I could flick the lights on, sitting there on the shelves, I could see these things glowing. So just the tiny bit of ambient light 
coming around those blackout shades was enough for these things to glow. And that's, that's really darn impressive if you ask me. So on the subject of, of these two guys, uh, Mr. Eastland and Mr. Becker, uh, one of the other things I've had the opportunity to do is to handle Ethan Becker's original Kephart knife that he acquired a few years ago. It's one of the, the few remaining five inch Cole Klesser Brothers Kepharts in existence. And it's what they based the K-Bar BK-62 on when it was released. But before that came out, um, working with Dan Eastland, he was able to, uh, or, or by uh, opening up that sample to Dan Eastland, Ethan kind of authorized a short run of 10 Kephart uh, reproductions essentially by Dan. And I managed to score uh, one of those 10. Uh, I, he didn't give this one to me. I had to, I had to fight tooth and nail for it. I actually auctioned uh, or uh, won this in an auction. Uh, so I, I earned this one the hard way. <laughs> but not only is it based off of micrometered measurements from that original Kephart, the materials even have a special story. Blade, about five inches, just like the original convex grind and swedge. So the grind's a little bit different from that original. Small, uh, slight tapered tang as well. What I think my favorite detail about this knife though is the wood for the handles. This is black walnut from Pennsylvania that was actually, it was a tree struck by lightning in 1913. So this piece of wood right here was, was on that tree that was hit by lightning at the same time that Horace Kephart was alive. And Dan had acquired this uh, through one of his furniture making contacts. He knew the, uh, the provenance of the wood. He was just saving it for just the right project. And when this Kephart thing came along, man, I, perfect, perfect usage for that wood. And I, I really like that detail. Now, a quick word about the sheath. This was made by another friend of mine, Reliance Leatherworks, run by Matt Gillenwater. And the sheath for this was also based on an old photograph of the, uh, the Kephart design, right down to the, to the stamp here on the front. Matt did a great job on the uh, kind of duplication of this. This is not the same sheath uh, that Ethan acquired his knife with. Uh, consequently, it's not the knife that, or it's not the, uh, the sheath that the K-Bar version came with, but this is also a considered an authentic Kephart sheath. Just look at that, that looks really cool. All right, last but not least is a knife uh, from my friend, Mr. Todd Hunt of TM Hunt Custom Knives. Another guy I met through, uh, through Ethan Becker's gatherings, just like Dan Eastland. And this right here is like the Nesbuck, man. This is such a cool blade. Todd has such a cool style that I really appreciate. Uh, so when it came time when I, I realized I didn't have a stag handled Nesmuck in my collection, which the original illustration of the Nesmuck knife showed a stag handle. Uh, and I thought Todd would be a really cool one to do it kind of in his signature style. So I went to him, I had a little bit of a shape in mind, but I kind of told him to kind of go for it, go nuts a little bit. And he went above and beyond and even threw in a bunch of uh, extra work on this knife as a wedding present for me and my wife, which is why for one thing you see our initials there in the little brass inlays on the bottom. And those hearts are something that Todd actually likes to do in some of his, especially his bigger blades, uh, because they're an act of love making these knives and it definitely comes through. But check this guy out. 01 steel blade, about four and a half inches. The antique finish is really cool. The rope file work on the spine is just intense, I think. We've also got this awesome brass bolster, peening here on the top, file work on the sides, nice red spacer, a small mosaic, and just a really, really nice piece of antler right there. It actually works really well too. Um, I've, I've only carried this a couple times. It's, a, it's definitely a special occasion knife, uh, but it's a special occasion where you can strap a fixed blade onto your belt like this or few and far between. But I have worn this at some knife center Christmas parties. <laughs> That's the perfect place for it. Uh, the sheath is also a nice work of art. You can see it right here. Several layers of leather. It's actually a rattlesnake inlay on the front and you've got a couple of thongs with some tying ends there on the end. It's, I'm getting emotional, think, emotional thinking of this one too. Um, this is what knives are about to me. Like the blades are cool, but the, the number of people that I've made friends with and just met, even if I'm, we're not close friends, this industry is one of my favorite places to be. And when I look at these knives, I see the knives, yes, but I see the people behind them and in the end, that's what it's all about. 
Uh, and that's what I hope 2021 is going to bring back to us. I hope I'm going to be able to see a lot of my friends again. Hopefully we're going to be able to travel, go to shows, and just put this year 2020 behind us. So that's it. That's just some small excerpts of my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we'll be back to our regular Knife AQ programming real soon. Uh, so if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to leave them in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll perhaps get a chance to answer them in a future video. Uh, normally, this is the point I say, if you want any of these knives, click the links in the description. Obviously, most of these uh, you can't get your hands on, but we will link to these brands. Uh, we do sell stuff from all of these folks here in front of me. But that's all the time I've got, folks. Thank you all for your support over this last year, and we hope to, uh, to keep you around in the future. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.